Good morning, everybody. Amprepairguy.com, 203-892-4119. Also, harbachelectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. So we have a Dentron in for repair. I'm going to go through it, fix everything. Customer said he had a filter cap fail, so he changed that one cap. You always have to change them all and change all the resistors. So I'm going to pull this whole assembly out and put a Harbach kit in. So he said that the windings were loose on the plate choke, so he slathered silicone all over it. So I'm going to, I'm going to remove that and put in the proper parasitic, parasitic suppressors. I'm going to put a board in, which is better than stock. So the SO239s, one has been changed at some point. One has some grip, the other one has like no grip. So I'm gonna take these out. I don't like this style. I'm gonna put in flanged ones from Max Gain Systems. Far better connector. It's a Teflon dielectric. I don't think the bottom one here is Teflon. You can see it wiggling around. Okay, so one of these doorknob cap values was off. I forget which one, so I have to go back to the schematic and change it because he said two had popped and he replaced them. So the air variable caps look okay. He has meter protection diodes. So uh, I'm going to go through the rest of it and I'll report back when it's all done. Okay, so stay tuned and please like, share, and subscribe in the meantime. I have band switch looks okay too. Okay, so, see you guys soon. So I'm back with the completed Dentron. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick power video. It's late here, had a lot of other stuff to do today. Okay, so customer wants a video of it on 20 meters. I tested it and all the other bands already. Radio set to roughly 50 watts or so. So that's the output from the amp and that's between the radio and the amp so basically it has to be our reflect 10 watt slug on average PP kit with the one KW slug on that side so key the amp with the foot pedal it's on the lower voltage audio hello 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 about 800 right there hello 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 show the settings audio hello hello wired for 240 there's the reflect, audio, hello, 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 hello. Okay, so I'm going to put on the higher voltage setting here. Audio, hello, hello, 1KW right there. Hello, 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 hello. Play current. Audio. Audio. Audio, hello, 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 and she's working like she should. Okay, so I'm going to let it cool off, and then I will show you the inside. Stay tuned. Here's the inside. Where to start? Where to start? Needed a lot of stuff. Get my pointer, because people don't like how my fingers look. <laughs> okay, so, brand new Harbach board, first off. Nice, nice. So I had to assemble the board, install the board, clean the rotary switches with deoxy gold. I already had diodes across the meter for protection. This cap was the wrong value, so I put the right one in. Also put internal tooth crush washer, lock, lock washers uh, behind the screws so they don't loosen up. Uh, Someone ran it really hot on one band, so I resoldered the connection over here on the band switch. Cleaned the band switches with uh, deoxy gold really well. These don't have an input circuit, so you're directly feeding the cathodes. You're going through the uh, the 2.01 caps that are in parallel first, but so that's how these are. So um, no neutralization either in these amplifiers. So. Okay, so got a brand new plate choke, upgraded, also a parasitic board, I put a series glitch resistor down there, it's kind of hard to see, uh, should have, uh, anyway there's, hard to see, but there's a 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor down there, I added a standoff, 
low. It goes uh, horizontal with the tube, same direction, but underneath. Tubes are really hot, so I can't touch them. Um, actually, I'll let them cool off, and then I'll show you. So, okay, moving on. So, someone really went in here and messed with it a lot. I had to compress the socket clips, clean them with the oxy gold. Really bad solder joints. Uh, looks like something happened. Tube flash, something in all white down there. Uh, so, someone replaced the point on one caps that are across. They were supposed to be the base of each socket across the filament uh, clips you know for the for the filament pins of each tube but there were only two so I ended up taking the uh, two out and I put new ones in and they're uh, as close to the sockets as I could get them and they're soldered really well I also added gas discharge tubes so the customer said he cleaned the relay I cleaned it again and he had those other SO239s. I installed new ones from Max Gain Systems. I'll show you the back um, after. Uh, I drilled four holes and mounted them with 632 screws and kep nuts. Got brand new Pentalab tubes. Yeah, they're all, they're all brand new, but for some reason this one is a lot darker than the others. So I guess it must be how they silk screened it on or however they do it with the uh, paint. They all have the same date code. So, Teflon wire, Teflon wire. One's for the plate voltage, one's for the plate current. So, place the two straps so they're nice and flexible. Put some heat shrink at the end so they don't possibly ever touch the, the frame for the relay. Tight some wiring, tightened up on hardware. So, okay, so I'm going to uh, turn it around and I'll show you the back. Just make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so, see you guys soon. So, this got a brand new fan. The other one was damaged, frame was damaged when turned. So, got these brand new Teflon SO239 connectors, like I said, from. Max Gain Systems relabeled it. The relay jack. Brand new cord. The other one was like really bad. Let me grab it here. It was all taped up and just uh, falling apart here. So it told the customer it had to be replaced. It was liability. So get a good look at it. Put a brand new plate blocking cap in. Uh, had two in parallel, but one was really damaged. You can see, it's all chipped. Prone to arcing when that happens, so. Got a brand new one. Is everything nice and clean. Nice, nice. <laughs> so, this came out really nice. Uh, you can replace the panels at the top and bottom panels at the bottom. It's like over the years, it got bent up a bit. But, uh, it's not a big deal. You could always find them on eBay. But, so this thing is good to go. So I'm going to let the tubes cool off a little bit and I'll pull a couple out, or at least one out, so you can see the series glitch resistor. I also zip tied the wiring underneath. And, yeah, so that's about it. Okay, so we'll be back in a second, well, a little bit once the tubes cool off. They get hot. Season. Okay, so there's the resistor. I ran the high voltage plate wire through one of the perforated holes in the RF deck floor. Slipped Teflon tube over it. Added the standoff solder tab on the top. Resistors soldered to one end. Other end of the resistor goes to the stock standoffs where it used to have two carbon comp resistors acting like a series glitch. There's the capacitor for the base of the plate choke from the stock plate choke. New plate choke has the wire connected to that point right there. Okay, so customer had a 30 amp fuse in it, okay? 
it says 22 amp, 30 amp fuse. So way too big, okay? Way, way, way too big. I was running it on an 8 amp fuse. Customer says he's going to run it around 800 watts. I, I know it'll do more than a kilowatt, but I recommend max of a kilowatt. And then obviously you have to derate it a lot depending on what mode of operation you're using. If it's high duty cycle mode, just go you know go buy buy the manual. Just remember some manuals like this one, it's input power, not output power. So I believe it says 2,000 watts um, output for the higher um, output mode, and um, so it's roughly like 1,300 watts. Be factoring the efficiency. Uh, so. Actually, let me let me just check right here. That is for yeah SSB two KW PP input CW one KW input. Okay, so always go by the manual, but it's all the customer. I would keep it at a kilowatt or less, but it's up to him. So it's running. Like I said, it's running fine on an eight amp fuse, but you could put a ten amp fuse in it if you'd like. That'll be plenty. You always want a fuse in something that is just big enough. You, know, you don't want it overfused because that's when you end up cooking your plate transformer if you're abusing it or if you have a hard short on the plate supply or some other short on one of the, wi the uh, secondary windings. Okay, so I've been up since 4.30. Time for me to go relax for a little bit before I go to bed. And then I get back to fix an amps tomorrow. I have another one in the box. More to pick up. So, thank you for watching. Website's amprepairguy.com and also harbachelectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good night. 73.